And good evening and welcome in to Concordia Memorial Auditorium. I'm Jason Groth with Lance Rock as we get ready to go for tonight's Section 8 to a championship game between the Purim Yellow Jackets and the Concordia and the Pelican Rapids Vikings as we get ready, Lance, for what should be a classic between these two schools. Exactly, Jason. Doesn't get any better than this. Section 8 AA basketball. Uh, we're at a championship round and, and winner take all. And again, we talked about in the boys game the other night how many practices and how and that's not even counting off season and all of the shots taken by each of these teams and these young ladies and it all boils down to this and the winners go into the cities and the, the loser uh, had a great season and, and that's the that's the heartfelt part about this thing is you're going to go over a lot of stats that show both of these teams are excellent teams and and probably in a lot of sections might have had a shot to come out and it's going to be a great game tonight before we get into the stats we got some thank yous we'd like to give first of all we would like to thank united community bank kale and family brands as well as perm health for their support of tonight's broadcast without them we're unable to bring this to you so we'd like you as well as you're tuning in to thank them and show their local support as well as we thank them for their gracious support of tonight's game between the yellow jackets and the vikings we thank them again and it's great to be here lance it's the yellow jackets 25 and 3 ranked number six the vikings 25 and 3 ranked number seven and you look at tonight's game you sometimes you talk about the storylines the team of destiny against maybe a david goliath i think there is no david goliath matchup here tonight two even squads but on wednesday night for the yellow jackets it was getting over the hump of barnesville now for pelican rapids they want to get over the hump that's the yellow jackets the yellow jackets have defeated them twice this year both by five points and that last one just not too long ago ended with a big basket by kai anderson to give the yellow jackets the lead and they held on to win by five yeah and two kind of drastically different paths to get here though jason is as good as both of these teams are three overtimes four overtimes having to be played by the pelican rapids vikings to get to this and we'll talk more about those then the yellow jackets kind of came out early uh, in the first round against park rapids and left no doubt and then the barnesville game they really did kind of the same and then barnesville fought back and then the yellow jackets on the teeter-totter they just kind of took that last swing and uh did just an outstanding job of taking control of the game and uh, there's star power in this game, and, and we'll talk about those players as well. But again, uh, tonight it is again probably when you look, you're gonna you could fight this if you're from other towns, and Barnesville may think that they should have been in here. East Grand Forks had a good run. This might have been the two teams that we looked at if if you started the beginning of the season going, who are a couple that you're gonna pick to be in this game? You probably would have started with these two. The Yellow Jackets and the Vikings shared the Heart of the Lakes Conference Championship with two and with ten and two records overall. And you look in the last five meetings, though, have gone actually last six have gone the way of the Yellow Jackets, going all the way back to 2021 when Pelican Rapids last beat Perham 44-43 in overtime. And one of the things you look at, the Vikings went to state that year in 2021. They have some Concordia magic. Brian Korf, you may see it on the side, is wearing that patented orange shirt that I know he made famous when he leapt on the table after Matty Guler's three-pointer against Fergus Falls. But last year, they didn't have that luck. They were knocked off early by Wadena Deer Creek, who Perm eventually defeated in the section championship in Detroit Lakes. But this year, it's back here at Concordia College. And there's something about comfort I know it was a few years ago but there's that comfortality and comfortability is maybe the right word for Pelican Rapids because you think about it they got here down 20 forced overtime knocked off Holly yeah and and being here for part of that game and and following along through the whole thing outstanding comeback in it and again it shows their perseverance that shots didn't fall early for them and and they, they well let's be honest they dug a big hole but slowly they filled that hole in and into the end uh, they just did some dynamic plays and kind of showed you what they had 
you talked about during the season in uh, the Yellow Jackets with the last six victories, I believe, that you said. The two this year, interesting. As uh, Yellow Jackets like to get up and down the floor, they like to score the basketball. Both games in the 50s, and both won by the Yellow Jackets by five points, which tells you we could be in for a barn burner here tonight. And a five-point difference is a couple calls, a couple baskets that rim in and out go your way instead of against you, all of a sudden that outcome's different. And so tonight I think it's gonna be some minor adjustments. It's gonna we're gonna see some different things tonight than you probably saw in those first two meetings. Well and a couple of things you're gonna talk on, you touched on a little bit there, a couple of calls. Foul trouble I think tonight is gonna play a big role in this contest. How is this game gonna be officiated? Will it be as officiated as loose as it was on Wednesday or will it be as tight as we've seen during the regular season? That could play a role as well tonight. We'll take a quick time out. We want to thank our sponsors again, KLN Family Brands United Community Bank, as well as Perm Health for their support in making this broadcast possible. I like coming to work for the customers and my coworkers. Every day presents an opportunity to help someone new and another new story from a coworker that makes us laugh. It's pretty fun. It's a great atmosphere. Everyone gets along great. Our bosses are fantastic. I work at the Frazee location. We have a great atmosphere every day. I think people should come to work here because we have a great time. We care about our community and our customers. And also we would like to thank Perm Health as well for their support of this broadcast. Without them, this game unable to get on the airwaves. So again, we'll thank KLN, United Community Bank, as well as Perm Health for their support. And earlier today, I had some community members come up and thank us for these broadcasts, but also thank these sponsors for making this broadcast possible because I know some people might not be unable to make the trip as, and are able to tune in at home. Absolutely, Jason. And, and again, these sponsors have, have been a part of the community and they're part of what this is all about. And, and uh, again, hats off to them. A, uh, a little bit of a shout out to a, a good friend at uh, United Community Bank, Ryan, and all that his sponsorship and his willingness to be a part of this, what we're doing to bring high school athletics into your uh, household, it, it, it's just phenomenal. So we'd like to thank all three of those sponsors tonight. It's an electric atmosphere. We're hoping to bring you that same energy in the booth tonight. And uh, th it's just a great time of year for basketball. We talk about Mar March Madness. This might be March Madness at its finest. Section finals, semifinals, a lot of people love the semifinals and everything. And I, I have to admit, I'm a semifinal guy. But there's something that brings the chills that go down your spine when this finals matchup comes on and you can see people filing in and the and uh, warm-ups happening as we're watching both teams here uh, warm up and get ready to roll for tonight's game. Just an electric atmosphere. Well, you touched on it a little bit, and it's kind of like how some people view, in comparison to the NFL, conference final Sunday is sometimes better than the Super Bowl, and that's kind of how I view the section finals as being almost better than some of those first round games at state because you have the top two teams in each section across the state battling it out and sometimes you might have what could be a state championship quali quality game in the second championship. Well and here's the way I look at it Jason and all odds of whoever wins this one they're going to be pretty unfamiliar with who their first round in the state's going to be. There's something about these rivalries that are close to home and teams that you've played throughout the season that leaves some question marks, especially when you can look at Perm's, Perm's route to. Barnesville had beaten them twice at their place and at the Hive. There's intrigue there. Tonight, Perm's beat Pelican Rapids Vikings both at their place and at home by five points only. 
There's intrigue there. And they know each other so well, right down from the players to the coaching staff to the fan bases, the, the student sections that are sitting uh, directly across from each other. That's what makes this, to me, such a special atmosphere. And, and I take nothing away from being down at the state, but there's something about these hometown rivalries like this. If you don't get excited for that, I don't know what you're going to get excited for. The Vikings are hoping to make their fifth appearance at state. The Yellow Jackets are hoping to make their third and second consecutive. The Yellow Jackets went last year, knocking off Wadena Deer Creek 58-44. to And then they went 1-2 and two down at state with their lone win over Crosby Ayrton, who just knocked off the loose Marshall in advance in the Section 7 championship, which I believe is being played in Duluth. This one... We're about eight minutes away from introductions, lineups, and all that fun stuff. Uh, we have the starting lineups, and here they are for the Pelican Rapids. The visitors starting at a guard, a 5'7 sophomore, number 13, Morgan Korf. Starting at a guard, a junior, a 5'9 junior, number 23, Grace Backstrom. Starting at four, a 5'11 junior, number 33, Anna Roysom. Starting at four, a 5'9 senior, number 34, Claudia Garath. And starting at four, a 5'10 senior, number 44, Ellie Welch. Head coach of these Vikings is Brian Korf, who's assisted by Cody Schaefer, Amanda Bills, and Bill Kirkwood. The Yellow Jackets will start like this, a 5'4 junior guard, Cora Grismer, a 5'10 sophomore forward, Kaya Anderson, a 5'8 senior forward, Kennedy Pilgrim, a 6'0 senior forward, Willow Field, and a 5'3 inch senior, Riley Mickelson, for the Yellow Jackets, head coached by TJ Super, He's assisted by Robbie Cox and Michelle Borman. These two teams, a little bit, are rolling is one way to put it. They both have one win, one loss in their last, nine, I believe, nine games, maybe eight games it is. The Yellow Jackets with their last loss to Barnesville and the Vikings with their last loss to these Yellow Jackets. But one unique thing about this Vikings squad, they're overtime friendly. Their last three games have gone overtime. Knocked off Managa in the regular season in overtime and then followed that up with that triple overtime classic over Frazee and then knocked off Holly in overtime. And then that Holly game, they're down 20, rallied back as we listened to it on the way home and they're able to pull that off in overtime. And that I think is a little bit unique in a way as you look at these two teams. Yellow Jackets, you could say in the playoffs, not really battle test. Yeah, Barnesville gave them a little bit of run there was a four-minute stretch in that second half where the game, I thought, could have teeter-tottered either way, but no one could make a basket until Cora Grismer went on a bit of a run, and that helped the Yellow Jackets pull that away and pull out that victory. While on the other side, Pelican Rapids definitely battle-tested. They certainly are, and, and, they, and they've taken it to the limits. And you talk about teams of destiny, and sometimes you start to believe that this is our year because even against all odds we made it, Sometimes you see that being an underdog team. Sometimes you see it being a team that probably should be here but have had to fight tooth and nail to get to this point. And I, I feel that way a little bit about the Pelican Rapids Vikings tonight. That being said, the Yellow Jackets have just imposed their will on other teams. And it's going to be interesting to see how that goes tonight. And, it, you know, you go through some keys, you go through, through some matchups, you go through things. I just think the Yellow Jackets are going to have to come and match some intensity by this Pelican Rapids Vikings team. I think they live on being scrappy. They live on intensive defense. They live on getting all the loose balls. And even though I, I would, you got to consider the Yellow Jackets the favorites as the one seed, I think they're the ones that may have to match that intensity tonight by the Vikings. I, it, I just, they're, they're so scrappy the way they play. On the other hand, are the Vikings ready to shut down Willow Thiel? Nobody's done that this year. Talking to Coach Super and talking amongst ourselves, we're almost taking for granted a 30-15 game, 30 points, 15 rebounds, like it's a normal night. That's not normal. That's not a normal night. So uh, real interesting, real interesting to uh, be thinking about those things as we get going, which which is gonna which is gonna win the battle out the, the little bit more scrappy or maybe that little more inside play where you're running your sets to get Willow Thiel the basket. We'll take a quick break as the pregame show rolls along here on the Perm Yellow Jacket Activities Tube. We all know you're looking through Zillow trying to find that perfect home. 
Better question is, have you been pre-approved for it? If you're looking at making a move this year, getting pre-approved is gonna be a great first step for you. What a pre-approval is gonna do is it's gonna set filters on your search and give you realistic expectations on what kind of homes you should be looking for. To get pre-approved, stop in and see us or visit us online at ucbankmn.com. I'm Alec Meyer, I'm a mortgage lender, and let's get ready to move this year. Welcome back in the Concordia Memorial Auditorium for the Section 8 2A Girls Basketball Championship between the Yellow Jackets and the Vikings. Awesome. Uh, awesome. The, the two bands battling back and forth, Jason, just kind of gives you that old time feel of uh, days gone by for me. Again, we're probably about the right time to talk about some keys of the game. We kind of talked about. Uh, guarding Willow Thiel, I think there's multiple ways that we might see out of Pelican Rapids. Uh, some people might call them junk defenses. I like to think that it's it's trying to take advantage of what you have. So are you going to see a triangle and two? Are you going to see a matchup zone where they're running at people? I'm really curious to see what's going to happen tonight. And then how do you make those adjustments if, if you're the Yellow Jackets? Are you able to pick that up on the fly and change some things that you need to? So I think it's going to be a cat and mouse game, just like it should be when we get to this point of, of, of play. Uh, it's going to be one of those, and I think that might be one of the keys, Jason, is if things don't go well for a little while, how quickly can you forget, turn the page, and then start over again before that deficit gets too big? I think another key also, if you're the Yellow Jackets, this is a business trip. This is where you're supposed to be. Next year, your goal is to get to state at the end of this year. That's where you were at last year. Your job is to take care of business tonight. I know Pelican Rapids has got, they have that mental hurdle. You talked about matching that intensity. Pelican Rapids hasn't beat Perm in three years. So they got to try to get over that hump themselves. Yeah, and you did a great job of maybe proving me wrong there, Jason. And that's what broadcasting is all about. It's just a real interesting matchup tonight, I think, for both teams. One person that has been just I'm kind of interested in is Roysom for the Vikings. I look at other games like in the tournament she had 18 points, 16 points. We haven't seen her really. She got injured at the at the Hive and she didn't show up in the scores when we played them last time. Could she be the key, that third person? You know what you have in Corf and Welch. You need that third person. I, I think a little bit like the Yellow Jackets. You know what you have in Thiel and Grismer right now. Who's that third person? And will that third person be the difference? Their difference in scoring certainly could be five points, and that's what the outcome's been in the, la in the last two games. As we're waiting for the clock to hit zero, we get ready. And we'll have the national anthem coming up. We'll take a quick time out. Thank our sponsors one more time. KLN Family Brands, United Community Bank, as well as Pearl Huff. We thank you for making this broadcast possible. We'll be back in just a short moment. Thank you. 
I like coming to work for the customers and my coworkers. Every day presents an opportunity to help someone new and another new story from a coworker that makes us laugh. It's pretty fun. It's a great atmosphere. Everyone gets along great. Our bosses are fantastic. I work at the Frazy location. We have a great atmosphere every day. I think people should come to work here because we have a great time. We care about our community and our customers. Well, welcome back into Concordia Memorial Auditorium as the starting lineups being introduced for the Vikings and the Yellow Jackets as they're announced alternately. The Yellow Jackets will start like this against Cora Grismer, Kai Anderson, Kennedy Pilgrim, Will Thiel, and Riley Mickelson. For the Vikings, it's Morgan Korf, Grace Backstrom, Anna Weissom, Claudia Garath, and Ellie Welch. We've talked about a lot of different keys. One thing we haven't really talked about is perhaps the first four minutes of this game and what kind of tone this will set. I think it's gonna be huge in these four minutes as you get in the flow, you find out how the game's gonna be called, and then you kind of know and build off of that a little bit as well. Well, and I think it's also who can shake off the nerves fast enough. I know these ladies all just played here a couple nights ago, but this is a whole different ball game again. Uh, you know, we talked about semifinals being important. There's a different feel here tonight, Jason, and, and it's crazy to think about, uh, you know, both of these teams. There's a little bit inside for the seniors on each team, I'm sure, and a little bit for the underclassmen playing for them. They don't want this to be the final night. And all of those emotions come into play. Who can maybe keep them in check right away uh, will be the important part as we uh, as we continue to work here uh, towards our Section 8 AA champion. Yellow Jackets and the Vikings getting ready to go and in 36 minutes one of these two teams will be making their third or fifth appearance at the state tournament. Willow Thiel to take the opening tap for the Yellow Jackets. Anna Roysom for the Vikings. Opening tap goes to the Yellow Jackets. They'll have the game's first possession. Mickelson will launch for three right away out the back iron, no good. Rebound grab, Thiel, and a foul right away on Pelican Rapids. And again, it's tough to take a follow in the first nine seconds of the game. Long rebounds sometimes do that. Uh, again, uh, early fire here by Mickelson. Follows on Roysom, her first. Here's that first look at what kind of defense. And right now it's let Mickelson shoot from wherever. She misses that one, and that's what Pelican Rapids is elected to do early on. They get the board. Here comes Korf back the other way. Korf with it. Near side. That's Roysom. Into the corner there is Garath. Back up, Korf getting pressured by Grismer. The help comes. Now driving baseline and tapped out of bounds off the hands of Backstrom. And he'll stay with Pelican Rapids. Korf to inbound with 13 on the shot clock. Getting pressured there. Backstrom will try baseline. In trouble. Finds Korf. Korf off the screen. Into the lane with three. Shot, maybe a pass. Anyway, it's a turnover. Here comes Thiel. Thiel down low. Pilgrim. The kick out is to the Pelican Rapids bench and a turnover. 
And these are those early game jitters we talked about, Jason. It's going to happen. You can guard against it. You can say you've been here. It's going to take a couple possessions up and down the floor, get that first basket to go in, and then away we go. Far side it goes. Welch kick out. Long jumper off the mark. Rebound battle for grab there by Gurath. Another shot attempt that time. Royce him off. And now Grismer the board. And you talked about what kind of play. Physical play I think is going to be the theme of the night as a lot of bodies. And just as I say that, uh, we get a, at another foul. That looks like it might be on Royce him. If it is, that's quickly or second. It is. That's going to put Pilgrim to the line. First free throw is off the mark. Now into the game is Ari Hovland. She had some big shots against Holly. And don't let that freshman status fool you. Uh, she can shoot the basketball. It makes them a little different with size-wise. Uh, as the second one's missed as well, but they can go a little more up tempo even right now, Jason. So early changes might be happening. Dorf off the screen. Kick. Hovland launching for three. It's good. Just like that. Hovland gets the Vikings on the board. Back the other way. Here's Steele. Cross court. Anderson. The long three from Kai Anderson is good. And we're all square at three apiece. And I think the pregame jitters, the early game jitters are gone. And uh, we're going to settle in some for some really good basketball. Korf driving through the lane, but travels. And again, I think it's one of those things if you're, you're going to battle uh, both coaches, uh, definitely probably asking, hey, I, those bumps are getting called on one end. Why aren't we getting it on the other? And they might have a point, and, and it, it's going to settle in as the game goes on. Handoff, steal, turnaround jumper too strong. Rebound grab by Pelican. Key to that, they pushed Willow off the block, and so it became a lot longer shot. Again, nice defense here by Cora Grismer. She's just really... Uh, uh, taking this challenge on of guarding Korf and, and getting physical in, a, in a, a, a good way, bumping her off her dribble once in a while. Now Korf with it, with seven on the shot clock. Gonna go right side, float it up off the glass, it's good. Morgan Korf looks off balance, but it's smooth. Now she hits that one off the backboard. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the first, not the first time she shot that shot. Mickelson knifes through. Fakes the pass. Korf wants to travel. It's not there as Mickelson puts it up and in for two. Hovland. The pass there now for Backstrom. Mickelson trying to get a steal. Backstrom now. Mickelson does get it. Slows it down. Anderson. The Pilgrim, she will fire for three. It's good. Kennedy Pilgrim for three. And the Jackets now regain the lead at eight to five. And Korf from deep. Wow. Morgan Korf nails that one, and it's now tied at eight. Grismer drives, kicks. Anderson, an answer. It's good. Kaya Anderson. Nothing but nylon for her. She's got six. Again, what a what a great start to the game after that first couple minutes. It seems like both teams are getting what they want to. A good defense here by the Yellow Jackets. Again, it's nice when you can roll this clock down, which seems like what the Vikings want to do, and then you turn uh, Korf loose one-on-one -on -one looking for the open player. Hovland, no, rebound, Thiel. Pilgrim up ahead for Anderson. Anderson now will take it to the hoop. And a blocking foul. And the foul is going to be on Backstrom, and Pelican Rapids fans have not been happy 
tonight with the officiating. They're not happy with that one as well. Well, I think anytime, whether it's justified or not, when you see three fouls to zero to start the game, it, it gets you questioning if you're in the in the crowd. Uh, definitely have been some fouls against Pelican. As again, they, they bump Willow off of her spot. Uh, nice job of defending her so far by the Vikings. Back to Korf now. Step back fake. Comes back up. Gerath with it now. Looking for a cutter now. Goes back to Hovland. 12.40 to go first half. Yellow Jackets by three. Here's Korf. Now to Welch. Shot clock at seven. Pull up jumper for her. She's fouled and Welch were in a trip to the line. And Welch, she's one that you're going to have to watch out for. Can definitely hit from outside. As the foul is on Mickelson. I kind of like what they're doing is they're using her as a screen where she's with her face to the basket. And that free throw is good by Welch. Yeah, you, you called that exactly right. Uh, she's the screen and she can roll to the basket or she can step back. Once she stepped back, she's been faking the three and she hits both free throws. She gives that little shot fake. Uh, you have to respect her ability to shoot the three and then she blows by you and that's what happened and the, the reach caught an arm and that's how she got the free throws. Pilgrim in the lane. Now to Anderson. Now to Mickelson. They drop off a little bit on her. Now she'll drive. Gets forced near side, passes. And along the near side, but a nice job by Hovland to get a hand on that one. Interesting. Watch this as we go forward. That time, Willow out of the block area. She was playing at the top of the key. Uh, has been known to shoot the three. So watch, and it's an inbounds play right to Willow. She goes up. Uh, definitely hands all over the place, and they just surrounded her. It was like a quadruple team. Uh, ball goes out of bounds. So underneath again to the Yellow Jackets, if they're going to pack this tight, look for an outside shot to come. Anderson, and a bump, and a foul on Pelican Rapids. The seal went to the floor. Fouls on Korf. I think they thought the All Jacks thought there was a timeout called. And I think the official did too as he called it and then must have heard something different. Mickelson will fire a three. It's good. Riley Mickelson's not five now for the Yellow Jackets. Korf. Goes to Hovland now. Inside Welch. Welch, the help comes in Mickelson. Kick near side to Backstrom. Korf with it. She's showing range earlier. Now it's a nice crossover step back. Now hands it off. Welch gets it back. But a travel. Mickelson to Anderson. Cross court for Thiel. She's going to fire a three. That's too strong. Rebound grab by Korf. And again, it's one of those, I think, uh, Coach Core from the Pel Pelican Rapids Vikings are okay with that. If she hits that, they're willing to give her that as this one rims in and out. A good look there for Morgan Korf on a deep shot. Just couldn't get it to go. Back the other way, it's Grismer. Anderson now baseline, Mickelson inside, Thiel. Thiel works through traffic off the glass. Good for two, her first two points of the night. And the Yellow Jackets lead by six. Notice how hard they're making her work for her baskets, though, again, I think they were willing to give up some fouls. They don't want to get into foul trouble, but yet they want to make every possession really tough on the Yellow Jackets. Korf off the screen from Welch. We'll go to the hoop. High off the glass, no good. Mickelson in, gets the rebound. Pilgrim up ahead to Anderson. Anderson stops, now will drive. Kicks back to Thiel. And Hovland comes back the other way with the steal, and now it's poked back away by Mickelson. And Riley Mickelson is having herself a game here so far in the first eight minutes. Pilgrim pull-up jumper. Rebound by Thiel is good. And the Yellow Jackets with an eight-point lead. Under 10 to go in the first half. Again, we'd like to thank United Community Bank, KLN, 
and Perm Health for making this broadcast possible here tonight. Dorf to Welch. Welch against Grismer drives baseline. Off the hand of field, but it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Pelican Rapids. And again, I almost think they're letting them play more than they did even on Wednesday. Uh, Welch has got to be wondering what it takes to get a foul as she pretty much got bodied to the out-of-bounds line, uh, at least from my angle. And again, out-of-bounds here for the Vikings. So interesting the way the play has been called so far. Korf. Got to hurry with four on the shot clock. Just fires a pass in traffic. It's turned over. Up ahead, here's Razor who just checked in. High off the glass. It's good for two for Greta Razor. So the Yellow Jackets by 10. Familiar territory, though, if you're Pelican Rapids. Dorf with it to Welch. To Royzum. Royzum on the floor with two. Gets it to Hovland. She'll drill back out. Mickelson will follow as it goes to Korf. Korf goes left, kicks to Hovland, who steps into it. And it's too strong, and it's out of bounds. And it'll be Yellow Jacket basketball. Things going Yellow Jacket's way here in the early going. Right, and when that happens, you really got to value these possessions now going up. You want to increase this lead a little bit of full court pressure here. Uh, put on by Hovell and just token. It's a one-person uh, press, but the Yellow Jackets are shooting lights out. Anderson again, her third three-pointer. She's got nine, and Kai Anderson has helped the Yellow Jackets to 23-10 lead, and we got a foul on the Jackets. That's on Kura Grismer. Pilgrim will check back in. Willow Field back in as well. Riley Mickelson will get a quick breather and a nice round of applause there for her efforts so far in the early going. Korf. Gone out the offense, but no one's moving. Now they go to Hovland. This Pelican Rapids team likes to work the clock. Now they go down low. Royceum. And a foul on Diggins as she was aggressive with the reach in. Again, a lot of body contact down there in the lane and even outside the lane, just bumping people off of the uh, of their route. And again, Yellow Jackets have to be careful as well. Uh, foul trouble could could potentially change how this game looks. Welch launches for three and a big shot there for Ellie Welch as the Vikings have went cold, but Welch steps up and hits the three to make it 23-13. Driving to the hoop, Pilgrim into the lane, tied up, and jump ball to that. I think that's the only thing you really call is a jump ball on that, because you call it travel, it's both. Exactly, and, and then it goes to the jump ball anyways, so. And it was a clean grab by Pelican Rapids. 7.50 to go, it's a 10 point Yellow Jacket lead here in our opening half. Let me thank you for tuning in to the Section 82A Championship. The Yellow Jackets looking for their third appearance at the state tournament. Pelican Rapids looking for number five as Welch has the open look from the elbow. It's no good, and Razor's there for the rebound. Really good look by Welch, and you're satisfied with that shot if you're the Vikings. Uh, I'm sure she's hit that many, many times. Razor left wide open, in and out. Rebound punched out, but it's punched out of bounds by Anderson. They left Razor wide open. She's shown the ability to hit from outside and had a good look as Kaya Starzel will check in for Kaya Anderson. Morgan Korf has five. Welch with five to lead the way for Pelican Rapids. Hovland with the other three. Early five for Korf. So nice job by a rotating defense by the Yellow Jackets as many girls have, have uh, drawn that assignment. Nice look across. Just couldn't quite complete that. Korf with it. Get a screen from Guler. They switch to the Yellow Jackets. Royzum's going to take the three. He misses everything. Thiel gets the loose ball. Here's Starzl back. Now to Diggins. 
Inside it goes the triple. Now to Diggins, extra pass. Razor thought about it, and they're going to let her shoot it. She'll hit it. Greta Razor showing no fear of the other team letting her shoot, and she nails it in the Yellow Jackets by 13. Court for the answer. No, it doesn't go. Rebound tied up, and we have a jump ball again. Possession arrow will go to the Yellow Jackets. And again, the Corf's got to feel a little snake bit. I, I think in my mind, that's the third shot of hers that's rimmed in and out, and uh, she's had some really good looks. It's been some deeper threes, but Yellow Jackets, that's a tough shot by Razor when you're left like that and you regather yourself. A lot of times they don't go in. She was as cool as the other side of the pillow and just stepped up there and, and hit it. Starzl now to Razor again. Back to Starzl off her hands. Pilgrim to Grismer. Razor open again. She will fire again. That one's off the mark. The rebound to the floor, tied up, held ball again. It'll go to Pelican Rapids. Again, interesting time right now. Uh, there hasn't been a ton of scoring in my book, Jason. We were 23-10, 23-13, 26-13. <laughs> it's been about a three-minute lull here. Is one team or the other going to assert some dominance? Uh, either Pelican Rapids catching up or yeah, the Yellow Jackets extending their lead in this last five and a half minutes. You almost have to wonder how many times can the Vikings go to the well as Welch drives, spins, now tries to fire it near side, it's turned over. Again, we talk about the little things. There's the little things. Catch the ball with two hands, try to make a, a one-handed catch. The ball goes out of bounds, you lose that possession and Again, you allow the Jackets to extend this lead if they can. Razor looking things over. Cross court to Pilgrim. Back to Razor. She takes it on a hop to Grismer. Pilgrim now. Thiel into the lane. Kick out to Pilgrim. She'll take the baseline triple and hit it. Kennedy Pilgrim hits the three, and the Yellow Jackets are... Hitting from deep, and we got a timeout called by Pelican Rapids. They trail by 16. We'll take a break as the Yellow Jackets in control early in the first half. I like coming to work for the customers and my coworkers. Every day presents an opportunity to help someone new and another new story from a coworker that makes us laugh. It's pretty fun. It's a great atmosphere. Everyone gets along great. Our bosses are fantastic. I work at the Frazee location. We have a great atmosphere every day. I think people should come to work here because we have a great time. We care about our community and our customers. Welcome back here. to Concordia Moorhead where the Yellow Jackets lead 29 to 13 on Pelican Rapids. I'd like to thank United Community Bank, KLN Family Brands as well as Perm Health for their support to tonight's broadcast. I, uh, I just trying to think back, Jason, and, and uh, the last time I've seen the Yellow Jackets shoot outside in the, Number one, the volume that they've taken from the outside. Number two, the accuracy from the outside. And from, I'm guessing, three to four different ladies already hitting three-pointers. Again, it's it's probably got the Vikings a little on their heels going, the plan that we thought we were coming in with isn't going to work. So let's see what the adjustment is out of the timeout. It would look like you got to have a Korf-Welch-type set here, maybe a kick out to Hovland for three. But you need a basket on this possession, especially after the timeout. Morgan Korf with it. Grismer on her. Now to Welch. Here's Hovlin, the three from Hovlin. No good. Rebound Anderson. One and done are the Vikings. They like to work the clock. They need to get those to drop. They want to try to come back. Anderson wide open for three. Misses everything. Works inside to Thiel. It's good. And a foul. And Thiel will go to the line for a three-point play. And Anderson saying, I'll take the assist on that one. It was, no. It, 
one it's it's going the yellow jackets way right now and uh when things like that happen and it, it lands into the hands of one of your best players and they get a a three-point chance in it yeah you got to be thinking if you're the vikings what what's going on here and they're getting things they look as Thiel hits the free throw we got a few more subs coming in here but again i think you just got to relax and You've said it the best, Jason. They've been in this almost every single playoff game so far where they've went in with a deficit at halftime, came back out, and and, and caught up. So uh, don't go away. You're right. Uh, but I'm a counterpoint that they haven't played a team like Perm yet. Agreed. I, I will agree with you 100%. And especially a, a Yellow Jackets team that's playing the way they are right now. They're really moving the basketball. They're doing things so well, and you can just see their confidence on the floor. Um, they're just standing differently even than they were at the beginning of the game, Jason, and, and that just happens when things are going your way, and let's give them credit. They're making it go their way. Korf to Welch now. Welch to near side, Roizel. Hands it off, Korf again. Korf spins in the lane, off the glass, off the mark, feel the rebound, one and done again. Yellow Jackets lead 32-13, looking for more. Pilgrim loses the handle but gets it back. Kyle Anderson is going to drive at the elbow. Now to Mickelson, inside Thiel. Thiel works, spins off the glass, no, fights, gets the board. And the foul, no, it's a jump ball is going to be the call. Thiel is already at the line, but the call jump ball will stay with the Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets thought it was a foul too, but it's not. Head coach E.J. Super was thought they were shooting, then realized that they got to call a play as it was a jump ball. Pilgrim to Mickelson. Now to Thiel. Thiel works off the glass. No, there's a foul, and Thiel will shoot a pair. That's on Welch. Only her first, though, so as well as much as she's defending uh, Thiel underneath the basket as, as, as Thiel hits the first one. Again, I, I just feel like everything's forced right now for the Vikings, and that can be one of two things. I'm going to go with the thing I think it is. The Yellow Jackets are playing great defense. Willow, uh, Thiel hits the second one. I just think the, the Yellow Jackets are forcing them into taking shots that they don't want to take right now. Three-pointer. That's off the mark. Rebound, Hovland to the floor and a foul on Mickelson. Razor back in. As that's the second on Mickelson. Again, if you're the Vikings, you, you just can't let it get this lead expand much further than that. You're playing a really good team, like you said, in the Yellow Jackets. Uh, you just, it might be just too big a hill to climb. Welch drives, gets that one to go. Has a chance at a three-point play. Big opportunity here for the Vikings. A foul is on Greta Razor, and they're going to need a few more of those type of plays. Attacking, I think, downhill as that will open things up. And also spreading the ball around. I agree, and I think that starts on the defensive end. they got to get some stops here. I know they're a team that as that free throw bounces off, they're not a team that likes to go total up tempo. So you got to get stops on this end. And there is the first one because I think it should be jump ball to the Vikings. You got to get stops because you're only going to get so many possessions, especially when you want to eat away at this 35 second clock every single time to try to hold the Yellow Jackets down in scoring. You got to make every possession, both defense and offense, offensively, be such a value. Three pointer, that's good, and a big one. Anna Roysom hits the three, and a timeout called by the Yellow Jackets. We'll take a break. I like having to work for the customers and my coworkers. Every day presents an opportunity to help someone new, and another new story from a coworker that makes us laugh. It's pretty fun. It's a great atmosphere. Everyone gets along great. Our bosses are fantastic. I work at the Frazee location. We have a great atmosphere every day. 
I think people should come to work here because we have a great time. We care about our community and our customers. Welcome back to the timeout. Yellow Jackets lead this one 34-18. With three minutes to go in our opening half. Yellow Jacket basketball out of the timeout. Full court pressure here by the Vikings. Again, you expected something, and uh, Yellow Jackets just uh, zoom right by that. Let's see if that opens stuff up for Willow underneath, but again, active hands here for the Vikings. Feel. Tied up, held balls the call. Possession arrow stays with the Jackets. Shot clock hit 23. Anderson with the baseline inbound. Pilgrim to Grismer. Grismer to Thiel. Thiel will take a three and hit the three. Willow Thiel from deep, and the Yellow Jackets extend the lead. Again, that one really hurts if you're the Vikings. You had a couple opportunities. Here's those Korf knifing her way through. Uh, made that one look pretty easy and probably wondering where's that been the whole time. I think she's that's what they've been looking for, the Vikings on their end. Razor out to Anderson. Near side Pilgrim. Inside it goes Thiel. Thiel off the glass, no, but a foul, and she'll shoot two. Fouls on Ellie Welch. Free throw by Thiel is good. Thiel with 12. Yellow Jackets by 18 with 2.06 to go. And our opening half here from Moorhead. And that free throw goes. Korf picks up her dribble. Now to Welch, loses it. Grismer back the other way to Anderson. Anderson loses it back. Korf with it. Now she's looking to run. But will slow it down as the numbers game was not on her side that time. Welch to Korf. Hovland looking inside. Now they go to Welch at the elbow. Far side now back to Welch. Dribbles all the way near side. Hovland's going to fire for three. It's good. Ari Hovland with the three pointer. She's got six and a big basket there for Pelican Rapids. Thiel to Razor. On the near side, Grisner now Pilgrim with it. Hovland on her. Cross court they go. Razor open inside now and it's forced and turned over. And back is Korf. Really good knifing backside defense as she takes a deep three. I was just going to say that before Korf hit that, man, oh, man, they, they came all the way across the, on Willow Thiel for that double. Unbelievable uh, defense of, of pressure right there. And again, you start to feel a little electricity from the Viking side now. Pilgrim in the lane, off the glass, no, gets her own rebound, fights through the kick out. Thiel for three, it's good! Willow Thiel, another three, and the Yellow Jackets back up 16. If they're taking away the inside, go outside, right, Jason? It just uh, makes sense, but uh, nice job by the Yellow Jackets on an, a little adjustment there. Dorf working for the last shots. Uses the screen a little bit, goes right, kicks over for Hovland for three. Off the mark, Yellow Jackets get it. Up ahead, Grismer. She got it off. It won't count, though. And the Yellow Jackets will take a 42-26 to 26 lead into the break in a big first half against the Vikings, who usually only give up around... 47 points a game. Yeah, and I think the last two times the Yellow Jackets scored like 57. So unless something drastically weird happens in the second half, they're going to really uh, speed past that 
uh, again, the Yellow Jackets, a really good half, Jason. And I, I think almost maybe better than you could draw it up on a chalkboard if you were, were yeah, chalkboard, listen to me give away my age. Uh, if, if you were Coach Super, they just, they did, they moved the ball so well. Uh, everybody hitting threes from the outside, and you'll go through those that, that part for us. But, man, they just shot the ball so well, and, and I'm even more impressed with how they played defense in this first half. We'll take a break as the Yellow Jackets lead 42-26. to 26. We all know you're looking through Zillow trying to find that perfect home. Better question is, have you been pre-approved for it? If you're looking at making a move this year, getting pre-approved is going to be a great first step for you. What a pre-approval is going to do is it's going to set filters on your search and give you realistic expectations on what kind of homes you should be looking for. To get pre-approved, stop in and see us or visit us online at ucbankmn.com. I'm Alec Meyer. I'm a mortgage lender, and let's get ready to move this year. Welcome back into Concordia Moorhead. I'm Jason Grove with Lance Rock. We thank you for tuning in tonight. And again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, United Community Bank, Perm Health, and KLN for making tonight's broadcast possible. We really appreciate their support and we appreciate you guys tuning in tonight for this game here at Concordia Moorhead. And it's been a great first half for the Yellow Jackets. They're led by Willow Thiel, who's got 17 points on the night to lead the way. Kaya Anderson with nine, five for Greta Razor, five for Riley Mickelson, and six for Kennedy Pilgrim. Yellow Jackets really hit from the outside. At one point they had seven, I believe it's now nine three-pointers in that first half. Yeah, outstanding move in the basketball, and I, not that I should be surprised, but I was almost surprised when you said Willow Thiel was 17. I thought early on, really nice job by the Vikings defending her. They had that double team going. They kind of kicked her off the block a little bit, made the turnaround be a, like a eight, seven to nine footer instead of a three to four footer. And I thought they did a really good job defensively, but then she stepped outside, then was money from the three point line as well. And then that loosened up some of her inside game as well. So a, a nice job of adjustment there by coach super and his staff just making some minor tweaks when they saw what defense was being thrown their way by the Vikings. So uh, all in all, uh, really impressive first half by the Yellow Jackets in a really, really big game. Leading the way for the Vikings is Morgan Korf with 10, seven for Ellie Welch, six for Ari Hovland, and three for Anna Roysom. Roysom battled foul trouble in that first half with three fouls. Welch has two fouls of her own, the Yellow Jackets. Riley Mickelson really going on with foul. She has two, but she had a dynamic start to the game for the Yellow Jackets, hit a three-pointer, had a good look at the hoop, but it's been her play defensively that's really, I think, made Pelican Rapids uncomfortable, especially in that first eight-minute stretch. Right, and, and I think it's probably time long past due for my myself to say this, and Coach Super probably will laugh if he goes back and listens to this. This is back-to-back -back games where we've seen a good shooting team not shoot very well, Jason. Well, there has to be a common denominator, and I, I really believe that's that's the Yellow Jacket defense. And you mentioned Riley Mickelson. I think she's the catalyst. I think when she's aggressive and she's uh, tipping the ball and getting those steals, it passes over to all of her other teammates. We want one of those. We're going to get that. And if they see Riley doing that, they up their play because they know a fast break's coming the other direction. So, again, I think she's the one that kind of kicked off the Yellow Jackets tonight 
and it and it just kind of shines through the rest of the team after she gets going. So again, I think that Yellow Jacket defense has been outstanding. Now they have to do it for another half, and uh, if they do that, they're punching their way, their, their ticket down to the cities and uh, the, the opening date for the state basketball tournament. But you said they haven't, the Vikings haven't played someone like the Yellow Jackets yet. I agree with that, but they have a history of coming back in the second half. They do, and we'll see if they do that tonight. It'll be something else with the run that they've been on, but you look at this team, it's 18 minutes, and if you're the Vikings, it's the chunks that we talked about. I said it on the way home after Pelican was down, I believe it was 15. I said if they got it to eight with eight to go against Holly, they did that with 10 when it got to 20. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the second half. But again, Holly didn't really have that answer and the offensive scoring power. They had some good plays and a great game plan. They just didn't have that firepower that the Yellow Jackets do. Is Right now, Will Thiel is 17, but the key, I think, Kai Anderson with nine hitting the open looks tonight from deep. Three of four, I believe it was from three for Anderson, or maybe three of five it might have been. And then you got Razor hitting a couple of shots, Kennedy Pilgrim as well. Yeah, and that's been really, really been a key, Jason. And, you know, I think we've talked about this almost at every halftime. I think tonight it bodes true more than it ever has before. The, the, the Yellow Jackets can't slow down what they're doing, but they have to value every possession now. Don't take the first shot if it's not a, a really, really good shot. Work that clock, get a great shot. And I, especially when the lead's at 16, there's a lot of possessions there before the game gets close. I really do believe that you're gonna see the Vikings, they, they've made a run. How did the Yellow Jackets react? And it might only be a six point run that pulls it within 10 or 12, but are, how do the Yellow Jackets react? A lot of times, teams kind of panic. I think there's enough leadership on the Yellow Jackets team to pull that ball back out, say, let's go back to doing what we do really well, and, and that's probably get the ball to Willow in the paint and then get to the free throw line. The Yellow Jackets lead 42-26, 18 minutes ago. We'll take a break, come back, and we'll have your second half here on the from Yellow Jackets Activities YouTube page. I like coming to work for the customers and my coworkers. Every day presents an opportunity to help someone new and another new story from a coworker that makes us laugh. It's pretty fun. It's a great atmosphere. Everyone gets along great. Our bosses are fantastic. I work at the Frazy location. We have a great atmosphere every day. I think people should come to work here because we have a great time. We care about our community and our customers. Welcome back in to Concordia Memorial Auditorium. Again, we'd like to thank United Community Bank, Kayla and Family Brands, and Perm Health for their support in making tonight's broadcast possible. Well, then, this does not happen tonight, so we'd like to thank them here on the coverage of Yellow Jacket activities. Yeah, great night. Just an awesome start to the game for the Yellow Jackets. Again, it's, it's going to be a lot of those things we talked about with the keys, and, and they've come true uh, so far of, of what we really thought needed to be happen. And now if you're the Yellow Jackets, don't be satisfied. The 16-point lead, don't, don't be satisfied that that's just good enough. Continue to work. Continue to do what your coaching staff's doing and telling you to do because so far every adjustment the Yellow Jackets have made has been a good one. And again, uh, we're gonna see some different things. Uh, I, uh, the Yellow Jackets more than match the intens intensity of the Pelican Rapids Vikings. So again, here we go and you gotta execute the small stuff. Uh, free throws, fouls, inbounds. Uh, don't just forget about if there's one bad possession, move on to the next one. And, and I'm excited for the second half of this basketball game. 42-26 your score, the Yellow Jackets, nine three-pointers. Pelican Rapids has hit five, or excuse me, six, but they're two of three from the free throw line. The Yellow Jackets, five of seven from the line. Only three field goals besides the three-pointers for Pelican Rapids. 
in this contest. Again, 18 minutes to decide who's who's heading to the, the big city. Korf and the Vikings have the opening possession. Welch drives inside. Royce, some turnaround jumper high off the glass. No feel the rebound. Mickelson. Now Pilgrim with it to Grismer. Grismer hands it off. Pilgrim again now cutting his Grismer, but it goes to feel inside. She works through and draws a foul and will shoot two. Again, nice early job establishing Thiel down in the post again. Uh, free throw just a little bit long. Again, if you're the Vikings, you got the shot you wanted. It just didn't. It just didn't drop, and it's hard to. Uh, if Willow hits the second one. It's hard to do anything about that when you get a good shot and it just doesn't go in. Korf. Going to her right slowly. Now to Roysom. So they're trying to post Welch up inside. Now it's tied up on the floor. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Yellow Jackets. As Pilgrim, Mickelson, and Anderson were all in there. As now the Vikings are trying to go inside with Welch. I think they okay, just. They did actually call a foul. That's on Mickelson, her third. Wow, that is a big foul. And, you know, I think. Yellow Jackets were looking for three seconds in the lane when all that went down and they ended up getting the fall. Nice pass. The back cut there for Backstrom. She's got her first two points of the night. Mickelson with it. Now to Thiel. Thiel gets fouled and the shot no good, but the foul's going to be on Welch and Thiel to shoot two more. And I th believe that's going to be three on Welch, Jason, and that dramatically changes the game. Uh, for the Vikings, I don't know if you can take her out at this point, though. The, with the lead the way it is, free throw good by Thiel. I think you got to leave her in the game, and it looks like that's the decision they're making. But I think now you got to think defensively. She can't really stay down low on Thiel. You're going to have to make a switch there, and how do you do? How do you match that up now as it's 45-28? There does she become the double team instead of the one... Uh, that's the single team. So a lot of question marks going to be answered here. Welch for three. No. Rebound. Roysom to the floor, though. She now gets it, fights inside. Shot no foul on Anderson as she was leaning forward. And gets called for her first. It'll be two shots coming up for Roysom. And again, I think Anderson had a shot at the basketball if she would have went to get it or at least another tie-up. First free throw, good. Uh, again, these are great points for the Vikings, scoring when the clock is stopped, and it's still that 16-point lead, but you start to get the ball rolling, no pun intended, as the second one also goes. Nicholson up ahead. The lead's now at 15. Inside, Thiel. Thiel with position off the glass, and that's just too easy. And the Yellow Jackets lead 47-30. Thiel with 22. Might be the biggest fall of the game as Welch getting her third. Uh, definitely going to change the look for the Vikings on what they can do defensively. Korf with it. Shot clock at 20. Decides not to use the screen. Goes left. Nice through. Nice shot on the Euro step for two. Yeah, something that's become really common in high school basketball is that Euro step. It, it looks kind of funny, but it's really effective. Kick out, Pilgrim in the lane, feeds it through the legs of Thiel, and Korf gets the loose ball. An opportunity for the Vikings to close even closer as they trail by 15. Korf step back three, misses everything, out of bounds. And the Yellow Jacket fans will let her know about that one. Trying for that deep three was Korf. She's hit some before from back there. But that one just didn't fall. And now Grismer with it over to Mickelson. Pilgrim kick out Anderson. A corner three. It's good. Kai Anderson with 12. 
Did four three-pointers. Did you notice that confidence, Jason? She was running back to play defense before it even hit the twines of the net. Uh, that's when you're feeling good as a shooter. Thor works her way through traffic and puts it off the glass. Nicholson now to Grismer. She'll drive kick. Anderson again for three. Just off the iron. Korf the rebound, but it's stolen by Mickelson. Nice play to Thiel. A long jumper by Thiel is good for two for Willow Thiel. And a lead that was down to 15's back up to 18 as Korf again is going to launch. That's short. And Thiel the rebound. Here's Pilgrim. The three. No, it dropped. Everything but dropped. And Korf will slow it down with 14, 20 to go. And I'd like to thank Perm Health, KLN Family Brands, United Community Bank for their support to tonight's broadcast here from Concordia Memorial Arena. And now a foul on the Yellow Jackets. That's going to be on Mickelson by her reaction, so that's her fourth. Right, and, and that's really a big loss for the Yellow Jackets right now. It's been the little things that have amounted to the big things for the Yellow Jackets. Just like that last possession where Mickelson came, snuck from the backside, tipped the ball away, got another possession where Thiel hits a shot. So, again, who's going to pick up that intensity on defense here? Cor uh, I'm going Cora Grismer. She's really battled tonight on the defensive end and expended a lot of energy. Uh, I look for the Yellow Jackets to take off from what she's been doing. Megan Guler against Diggins, height advantage Yellow Jackets. Back up top to Welch. Welch in the lane against Thiel. Steps back, jumper short. Rebound tapped out, but grabbed by Hovland. Welch hands it off, Korf goes right to Yellow Jackets switch, but switch right back. Korf off that screen, that shot is rushed and it's short again. Might be just trying to do a little too much herself right now as Morgan Korf. And sometimes we forget she's a sophomore, Jason, and she doesn't play like a sophomore. And uh, sometimes you forget about that as Welch steps on the line back to the Yellow Jackets. 13.09 to go. Tough for us to see, but a good view by the officials. So we're going to roll with it again. Yellow Jackets holding the Vikings at bay here since halftime. Good start to the half. Post to post and a foul. Fouls on the Vikings. We'll see which one it's on. Looks like it's Korf it is. That's her third. Thiel with it. Grismer to Diggins. Over to Kennedy Pilgrim. Kai Anderson with it to Willow Thiel. Diggins again. Now Pilgrim drives over to Diggins. Baseline jumper for her. No. Thiel fights in for the rebound, but is fouled. And actually the foul is on Thiel. I believe it is. That's her first in Concordia with 12.47 to go in the second half. As Korf brings it up court. Korf off the screen from Welch. Looks into the lane, hands it off to Welch. Welch off the glass, gets the basket, has a chance for a three-point play. That's what you talked about earlier. They went back to that pick and roll series. It's a little bit different look than we're used to on pick and rolls. That time they took it all the way into the lane, kind of like an option pass in football. Nice job as Welch hits the free throw. Nice job by Corp and Welch, and you can see that's not the first time that they've done that. Follows on Thiel, her second. Anderson, Pilgrim, kick over to Grismer. Now Diggins into the lane, Pilgrim. Shot just no good, but the Yellow Jackets the board. They've extended some possessions. And Grismer for three, hits it. Her first three points of the night. Comes on a second chance possession, and the Yellow Jackets lead by 18. And 
A nice answer as Korf made it rain and hit nothing but nets. Anderson up ahead, Thiel. Grismer to Pilgrim. Cross court, Thiel. Over to Diggins, in the Pilgrim it goes. Now, the pass to Thiel is there. The shot is no good. She's fouled on the undercut. Foul, I believe, is on Welch. That's going to be her fourth. Right, and that's a tough foul to take. She had done a nice job getting uh, Thiel underneath the basket, and I don't know if it was the swipe at the end. Uh, Thiel misses the first one. Again, that's a real tough one to take, and, and I, they're not going to the bench. So, again, 15-point deficit here. Uh, second free throw goes for Thiel. I guess you're going to keep her in, and, and it's probably the right move in my book as, as she's such a key contributor for the Vikings. Inside Welch and a foul on Thiel. That's her third. Well, just like that, Will Thiel picks up three quick fouls. And again, now I'm wondering if you don't take Welch out for just a few minutes. At least until Thiel comes back in the game. Uh, but, you, oh, bad entry pass there, but might work out. Does not as it hit uh, Kaya Anderson does a nice job just uh, standing her ground in there. Grismer brings it up top. Now the free throw line extended to Anderson. In the lane, Pilgrim goes down low. Diggins off the glass, too. Really, Kate Diggins. Really nice look by Pilgrim, Jason. Just a nice bounce pass. Kind of a traditional old school high low look there. Corf in the lane turns it over. Now with it to Pilgrim. Razor down low, Diggins. But she traveled. And again, just trying to rush it maybe a little bit too much under there. I know the game gets kind of fast, especially when you get going up and down this big floor. Uh, but I like what the Yellow Jackets are doing there. They're, they're not backing away, getting Diggins into the game and saying, now it's your turn to go go at this Viking defense. So uh, crucial two, three minutes here, Jason. You talked about eight at eight. Uh, the run has to start now or it's going to maybe be too late not to be too rhyming tonight. Garath with it. Now Guler. Pull-up jumper blocked by Razor. But it goes to Royzum. Royzum hands it out, I think. Yep, she does. Now it's tied up. Guler comes free. And a timeout called by head coach Brian Korf was five on the shot clock. A much needed timeout there. It will be a 30 second timeout. We'll take a quick break here on the Yellow Jacket YouTube channel. We all know you're looking through Zillow trying to find that perfect home. Better question is, have you been pre-approved for it? If you're looking at making a move this year, getting pre-approved is gonna be a great first step for you. What a pre-approval is gonna do is it's gonna set filters on your search and give you realistic expectations on what kind of homes you should be looking for. To get pre-approved, stop in and see us or visit us online at ucbankmn.com. I'm Alec Meyer, I'm a mortgage lender, and let's get ready to move this year. Ten only to go. Yellow Jackets by 18. 58 to 40. Foul trouble starting to play a big role in this one. Roysom three. Welch with four. Korf with three. Four. Pelican Rapids Steel with three. Korf. The floater. She's fouled. She'll shoot two and then the timeout horn buzzes. But Korf gets the line for the first time tonight. That's crazy. As uh, aggressive as she, as she has been in the drive as the first one uh, goes in for her, that, the, that this is the first time she's been to the line. And foul trouble kind of racking up for the Yellow Jackets too, Jason, as the second one's just a little bit long, but offensive rebound by the Vikings. Hovland. Off the front iron, long rebound, it goes out of bounds. Yeah. 
the Vikings will be shooting in the bonus for the rest of the way here. And uh, that's a long time with almost 10, mi 10 minutes to go. So if they can be aggressive, uh, get to the lane, maybe make some good old-fashioned three-point uh, plays as uh, the Yellow Jackets turn it over here. Again, um, it'll be interesting to see. And here comes Thiel back in the game, maybe. I was wondering how long Coach Super would wait. Three fouls. So, again, now if you're the Vikings, do you try to go at that dribble drive at Thiel? As Welch comes back into the game as well with four. So, dangerous times for a couple of players as Korf into the lane, drives, knifes up a shot. It's good and one on a nice drive and finish by Morgan Korf. Falls on Razor, her second. Korf completes it. 14 point Yellow Jacket lead. Anderson. Now to Pilgrim. Anderson kick out. Grismer for three. In and out, no. Anderson the board. Puts it back up and in. Kaya Anderson fights inside. Gets the bucket and a Yellow Jacket timeout. Yellow Jackets back up 60 to 44. We'll take a quick moment to thank one of our sponsors. Again, we'd like to thank KLN, United Community Bank, as well as Perm Health. Perm Health, great supporter of Yellow Jacket activities. Not just the athletics, but the arts and everything as well. We'd like to thank them for their support here tonight. With six, with 9.13 to go, it's 60 to 44. Again, uh, it just seems like every time the Vikings make a little bit of a nick in the armor of the Yellow Jackets, the Yellow Jackets have an answer. And the thing is, it's been great tonight. It's been a lot of ladies, and, and of late, Kaya Anderson's come up really big here for the Yellow Jackets. Here's Korf. Guarded closely by Grisma. Now works. Into the lane, left hand, good for Morgan Korf. I don't want to get ahead of myself as this game, but can you imagine in two years? Uh, we have two more years of watching uh, Korf play basketball. She's so headsy and good with the basketball already, but the Yellow Jackets have shown they always have had that answer, so who is it going to be this time? Inside, Thiel works in the lane, shot up, no, rebound grabbed by the Vikings. The Yellow Jackets will come back the other way. Grisma. In the corner. As a Viking fan starting to make a lot of noise here in Concordia to get a defensive stop, and it works as the Vikings get the turnover. Dorf with it. Goes behind the back, now dribbles back out. Under eight to go. It's a 14-point game. Now the Yellow Jacket fans answer with their own chance to try to get a stop and a drive and a foul. Foul beyond Razors. Going to the hoop strong that time was Garath. Or excuse me, that was Welch. And that's some dangerous hold your breath type territory for the Vikings as that would have been number five if it would have been offensive. But I have a feeling Welch is a heady enough player, Jason. She knew she had Razor off balance a little bit and then just uh, got to the free throw line. Free throw off the mark there, and the Yellow Jackets with the board. Pelican Rapids will be shooting free throws the remainder of this contest. Actually, will be shooting double bonus the rest of the way. Inside, Thiel off her hands out of bounds. So there's another opportunity that way if you're the Vikings getting the line to try to cut into the lead with the clock stopped. Right, and I can see a little bit more dribble drive coming here from the Vikings trying to do just that. 
and then ultimately you have to sag in a little bit if you're the Yellow Jackets, then your threes are going to be just a little bit more open than they've been earlier. Korf to the hoop, high off the backboard. But a rebound for the Yellow Jackets as Mickelson back in the game with four. She stood right at the cylinder and waited as Anderson launches for three, misses everything. Rebound out of bounds, though. Last touch by the Vikings. Again, I like that S extra pass by the Yellow Jackets tonight. It's been there consistently, and I'd love to see how many baskets are uh, attached to an assist tonight for the Yellow Jackets as they are moving the ball well. Grismer, the floater, in and out. Here's Korf. Grismer just meets her right at the three-point line. Now there's that screen. Korf goes right, leaves the pass for Hovland. The shot, no. Welch for fifth. She will finish with 10. As Garath will check back in. Walsh will exit, and that will close the book on an excellent career at Pelican Rapids for Ellie Welch, unless her teammates can will themselves to a comeback. Mickelson to Anderson. Now Grismer. Anderson again. Yellow Jackets now working the clock a little bit with Pilgrim. Now to Mickelson. To Anderson. Inside it goes. Pilgrim saves it over to Grismer. Back to Anderson. Shot clock at seven. Pilgrim with the head fake and drive. Handoff. Thiel. She'll take the three and hit it. Well, old Thiel with 28 makes it a 63-46 game. Dorf to Hovland. The floater, good for Hovland. She's got eight. Near side, Grismer, 4-3. Off the back iron, off the backboard, and out of bounds. One of the adjustments I like that, and maybe it's not an adjustment, maybe I didn't pick up, pick up in prior games, but... Pilgrim playing that inside presence free throw line to in the lane. She's just done a really nice job, A, finding the open area, B, distributing once she gets it there. Korf step back, no. Rebound out of the hands of the field, but last grab by the Vikings and out of bounds. The Yellow Jackets lead 63-48. Five minutes to go. And Mickelson to Pilgrim. The Yellow Jackets working the perimeter. With 10 on the shot clock. They go to Mickelson, now to Grismer. She fires for three off the front iron. Yellow Jackets crash for the board. Anderson there, the putback. Spin move into the lane, Korf, no. Rebound tapped out of bounds. It'll go to the Yellow Jackets with 4.30 to go. The Yellow Jackets are starting the sense. Trip number three. Mickelson. To Anderson and a foul. Down low inside. I believe that's on Roysom. That's her fourth. Excuse me, that is just her third. Now Grismer into the lane. Now over to Anderson. She'll fire for three. That misses everything again. Grismer tries to save it, can't. Again, it'll be interesting to see what the Vikings do here. Definitely took a big cog out of the wheel when Welch went out with her fifth 
foul. She's just such a dynamic inside outside player. Again, you're probably going to see more Korf, but uh, maybe Hovland lighting up some threes as well. And Roysom hits the three pointer in a timeout. 65 51, 345 to go here in the second half. They are making the announcements to prevent the court storming. We know that's been a big thing here late. Yeah, everywhere, college and uh, just on and on. But again, back to this game, you know, you start to limit possessions, and I think there's foul trouble on the side of the Vikings, so I don't know how much you can get into the foul game. Do you start to try to extend this game? At what point, the two-minute mark? Uh, I'm sure all those discussions and those plans have been made long before right now, but again, I, I think you got to get aggressive here if you're uh, the Vikings. you got to try to create some steals, which ultimately if the Yellow Jackets can take care of the ball, Jason, they're going to get some easier looks here at the end of the game. Uh, and again, I think you got to have less dribble, more pass. And it's a lot easier to pick that ball off uh, dribbling it around. So uh, Coach Super and his staff, I'm sure right now, working on how do we spread the floor because they're going to attack us on this bigger floor. And now we've got better cutting angles. So uh, adjustments by both teams, I'm sure, at that timeout. And let's see who executes here. 345 remaining in, in what's been a kind of an interesting game. Yellow Jackets playing really well. Nicholson with it. Now Thiel to Pilgrim. To Anderson over to Grismer. Inside it goes. Up off the glass. Good for Willowfield. Hovland to Royzum. And the foul is called on the Yellow Jackets. That is on Pilgrim. Shooting two. Will be Royce. Again, we're a little bit too far away. It looked like the nose or the eye area. Again, not always the most exciting when you're going to go shoot a free throw. And uh, because of that, they're going to get a, a substitution coming in. One of those rare times, Jason, that uh, they come in for the free throw shooter. And what a tough spot to be in. You come off cold off the bench and have to uh, automatically shoot. Miller gets the second. And here's Mickelson across half court. In the lane, loses control. And the Vikings get the ball. Guler to Hovland. There's Korf. Drives, kicks, Hovland for three. That misses everything out of bounds. Last touch by the Yellow Jackets. And I'm not sure with th about three minutes remaining, you have to settle for the three-pointers if you're uh, the Vikings. If you can get an easy two, I would certainly take it here. Uh, obviously, you want to make up as much points as fast as you can. That shot off the mark. Feel the rebound. Up ahead, Mickelson. Field now to Anderson, and the Yellow Jackets going to work some more clock. Leading by 15. Inside, Thiel off the glass. No, gets the own board and put back. It's good. And the Yellow Jackets stretch it to 17. Korf drives, kicks, and is fouled, and will shoot a pair. Korf to shoot two, gets the first. Royceum comes back in. Second free throw, good. Mm -hmm. 
Nicholson with it. We'll let the defense come to her, and now a whistle and a foul. And they'll put Kai Anderson to shoot, or excuse me, Mickelson as they fouled on her. The fouls on Guler. Again, having Guler in the game gives them a few more fouls to use. Mickelson a little bit long, rebound here. And another shot for the Vikings to cut into this lead. It's still 15. Almost stolen away, attacked away by Thiel. Korf. Works, forces up a shot, it's no good. Rebound tapped around, Mickelson gets it. Stretches it out to Grismer. And now they're going to follow Anderson. That's on Gurath. So they're going to try to extend it as much as possible. And the Vikings emptying the bench here. Uh, Jason. Her. Starters will get a round of applause from their fans for this run that they've made. As the Yellow Jackets will complete this business trip tonight and get ready to head to Minneapolis. The starters starting to receive a great round of applause from the sex from the Yellow Jacket fans as Anderson will be at the line. Anderson will shoot the second. Second free throw, no good. Deal the easy rebound, and the putback is good. And has a chance at a three point play. Morgan Smith. Kate Diggins into the game as Riley Mickelson and Kai Anderson now get a nice round of applause from the student section. Thiel, the free throw is good. And now the crowd's going to roar as Thiel will exit. Will Thiel with 35 points has helped the Yellow Jackets to their second straight section 8 AA championship. Arrow with the three. Zela Arrow. Hamburger now to Smith. Here's Pulver. Smith. Here's Hamburger. And Mari Pulver for three, no good. Inside they go, Arrow off the glass, no, Diggins the rebound. And a timeout for substitutions. As the Yellow Jackets were in a return trip to Minneapolis. And a chance to be seen on the Neighborhood Sports Network. Yellow Jackets swing it around. Anna Leonard is good off the glass. Okay. 75-57. Arrow. They swing it around to the Vikings. Lifted Hogrood. Runs into a wall. Rosenthal on the defense there. The Vikings lose the ball. Nope, they get it back. Now they're going to Arrow. Shot no good. Rebound grabbed. And the Yellow Jackets can run this one out, and they will. The Yellow Jackets are your Section 8 2A champions with a 75 57 victory. And there is a court storming here at Concordia. As the Yellow Jackets are moving on.
Well, the Yellow Jackets and the Vikings will shake hands as the fans quickly exit the court. <laughs> After that, storming to celebrate their third trip to state for the Yellow Jackets and back-to-back -back Section 8 2A championships as the Yellow Jackets in the return to Concordia and the Magic for Pelican Rapids. Yeah, just a great night by the Yellow Jackets, and uh, they're well-deserving of this back-to-back uh, -back championships here, and Coach Super and his staff had the, the Lady Jackets ready to roll, and it was from the beginning to the end. They just showed their their dominance, and, and they had through this whole tournament, and uh, what an what a exciting time for both teams, and someday... Uh, the Vikings are going to look back and go, we were runner-ups, and that, there is nothing to hold your head down about that. And uh, they're going to graduate a couple seniors in Garath and Welch, but uh, there's a lot coming back uh, for Coach Korf and his team uh, in the following years. And, and if you're the Yellow Jackets, boy, this is not that you're, you ever take anything for granted, but I'm sure you had this game circled from the beginning as this was the first uh, of many things that you want to accomplish this year as both teams are lining up here and are going to uh, receive their medals and we'll kind of let that play out too Jason we may talk a little bit here and there throughout this but uh, uh, again you're walking away with uh, um, in the medal ceremony and just uh, excellent years for both teams as the Yellow Jackets earn the 75-57 victory. The activities directors from both schools. Derek Nelson and Aaron Anderson there to hand off the medals. First for the Pelican Rapids Vikings, who have their season come to an end with a record of 25 and four. And an outstanding season for the Vikings overall, but they just ran into a juggernaut that was the Perm Yellow Jackets who turned their game up a notch tonight. Maybe it was thanks to the special meal of burritos that they had the night before from TJ Super's sister as they made an outstanding meal. But And they have answered the bell today with the 75-57 victory tonight. And I think it's safe to say, Lance, we kind of peeked in as we were setting up a little bit yesterday. It was an interesting practice, but the Yellow Jackets came to business here tonight. They did, and, and Coach Super, I think, did a, just an excellent job, and, and he made some really, really, really great adjustments throughout this game. And, and, again, it's one thing as a coach to make the adjustments. It's another thing to get through to your players that, uh, that how to execute that, and they did just that. They, they worked seamlessly uh, together, and, again, take nothing away from the Vikings. I thought they played a really good game. Shots didn't fall. But again, it's been many nights that I've said that when teams have played the Yellow Jackets. At some point, you just got to go, boy, they must play really good defense because uh, teams are struggling against against them. And so hats off to both teams again. Uh, who knows what next year. You, you hate to look too far ahead. Again, we want to thank... Uh, um, Claudia Gurath and Ellie Welch for what they've contributed uh, for the Vikings, but the Vikings have a lot left to come back here uh, as they're a fairly young team other than those two ladies, I believe. So again, uh, who knows what next year may hold, but for the Yellow Jackets, celebrate this weekend, and then, like you said, it's a business trip. you got to go down. Uh, now it's not your first time getting there. Now you've got to probably uh, keep that foot on the gas and hopefully uh, pick up that first win when you get down there and then let the chips fall where they may. And we'll have some things to talk about, too, as the tournament gets ready to play out. This year down in Minneapolis, I believe it's at Williams Arena and the Pavilion as the 8AA runner-up plaque is now being presented to the Pelican Rapids Vikings who finish out an ex ex exceptional season, excuse me, again with that 25-4 and four mark. And 
as the Yellow Jackets will now receive their medals. The double-A tournament starts March 13th at 6 and 8 o'clock at Williams Arena and Maturi Pavilion. Seeding the brackets come out later this weekend. Right, and some teams have already, just like the Yellow Jackets, Jason, have kind of punched their ticket. It looks like Crosby Ironton, a winner over Pequot, 48 45, Albany over Holding Ford, 76 50. Uh, Providence Academy, 101 to 84. Uh, just so some really good games going and some still going on uh, to kind of finish out. Uh, what will be the double A bracket? And you mentioned that Minnehaha Providence Academy game that takes away the number one or two team in the state of Minnesota from the seeding fan side point discussion. Providence Academy Jordan 101 84. Uh, Minnehaha is still playing St. Croix, they just started there, so 8 4. Got a little last because I know last year it was Minnehaha and Providence Academy, I believe, in the sections, but right. the realignment this year. Yep. So, never mind. <laughs> Guess on that one was off a little bit there. New London Spicer, another team that we have talked about in the past. They're up 31-9 to nine with seven minutes to go in the first half. So, uh, some quality double-A schools coming into this tournament. And uh, Yellow Jackets are certainly one of them. The Yellow Jackets receiving their medals right now. Section 8 2A champions. With a 75-57 victory tonight. 31, Sophie Nelson. And Lance for the Yellow Jackets, Will Thiel. And Riley Mickelson now receiving hers. A big round of applause for her effort tonight. It's a lot of those things that don't show up in the scorebook, what she did tonight for the Yellow Jackets. Right, and I think if you would talk to the coaches and probably the players, they would... Uh, they would pinpoint to Riley and what she did tonight for the Yellow Jackets. It just seems like wherever there was a loose ball situation, she has either caused it or she was there to pick it up. And, and that's a skill that not everybody has to be that person who's just there ready to roll. And a nice round of applause for head coach. TJ Super as he gets his medal. As the Yellow Jackets are returning 14, to the Class 2A <laughs> state tournament. Is now, the captains going forward to receive their AAA championship. Now they'll receive their trophy. And a heck of a run for the Yellow Jackets, and it will continue with a 26 and 3 mark. And now, one of the favorite traditions of March is the cutting of the nets. And I was looking for the ladders, and I'm in the blocked view of that. Of our only thing that's been obstructed for me all weekend is here comes the ladder. Um, We'll hold on this shot here as we're getting a, a team photo. <laughs> as a former media member, this is one of the things that cracks me up. In the day of technology, you can maybe assign one person and then share the photo. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is, you know what? As many miles as these moms and dads have put on taking these kids to camps, to basketball all over the... They deserve to be on the floor. I will argue that one with you, media guy. They deserve this this shot of, of getting of their daughter and their daughter's friends as they probably have bought meals, uh, shoes, well, socks. <laughs> but I agree with you. But uh, this, is, this is quite a moment, and we don't want to make light of it too much. But uh, here's your Section 8 AA champions right here. And... Uh, I'm, I'm just ultra impressed that they look like they're all in good order, which would make the media guy happy, I would think.
It's good. It, it, this will be the first argument Jason and I have had uh, today on the ride up, the ride back. Um, three nights in a row of broadcasting together. But again, your Section 8 AA champions back to back years. Uh, the Perm Yellow Jackets and. Uh, Coach Super has worked some magic here, and the girls have put in the time and effort, and it's all it's good. And the Yellow Jackets getting a couple more photos with their trophy and their medals as they've earned their second straight trip and back-to-back -back trips to the Class so 2A this, championships. So when did this one come up, media guy, the uh, chewing of the medal when you – is it? I, I must have missed something, but I know I'm very old school. <laughs> you know, it's a little a lot of the different celebrations and pictures. It's the TikTok Instagram era. There we go. I have neither on my phone. And the be reels and a few other things, but I'm getting a few texts that they agree with you on uh, your aspects of the photo grouping. So, were there any doubts? I mean, come on. Were there any doubts that uh, the people would back me on this this one over over the media guy? <laughs> but again, as you said, a shout out to them driving those miles, helping them get to the games throughout the years. Yeah, it's just I've I've been in those shoes as we're starting to cut the nets down. I'll try to get the best angle I can here. We've. This is where we kind of have that bar in the way of our, um, but I'll try to get in on as tight as I can here. Um, again, just a shout out to our sponsors, Jason. What a, Hopefully this is something that these ladies can go back and look at, and other than us being goofy and silly as uh, Willow takes her turn cutting down at, at the net, they can go back and look at it and remember, maybe not tonight or tomorrow, Maybe not even a couple months from now, but the era you talked about of being on uh, streaming and on air, that this is something you can go back five years from now when they're coming back from college or starting their first job and say, hey, you know what, we were really a part of something special. And and they were. And, and as much fun as we're having, I hope they're having just as much fun. And, again, I didn't mean to make light of the media guy uh, but again, those parents and, and I've been in those shoes where you're not only taking uh, your son or daughter, you're taking multiple uh, people's sons and daughters and they just become family to you. And, and it's not what you're getting out of it. It's what you're giving. And, and again, um, this doesn't happen by accident. This isn't something uh, you don't win section championships without a lot of effort from a lot of people. And it goes from admin to athletic departments to uh, sponsors like we have tonight that bring this and make this a live event to parents and grandparents. And, and you could, the list could be on and on, and especially these coaches. And, and I know just the amount of time and effort and how they care for these uh, young ladies. And, and it, it's just a, a really special night. And, and uh, this, is, this is one I hope that they remember for a long, long time. And thank you for those of you who chimed in to, to uh, vote for me being right. I, I always appreciate that. It won't be the first or last time I lay that one on Jason tonight as we uh, go over what we saw here. But uh, Yellow Jackets, again, uh, you're probably more knowledgeable than this. Seedings will come out. They, they'll, they'll, bra they'll seed one through five, I believe, right, and three draw-ins. Usually that's done by Sunday, I believe. I think it'll be Sunday morning, or depending on if all the championships are tonight, it might be tomorrow morning. I haven't really looked at the other brackets. not going to lie on that aspect. I've been focusing in on 8-2-A, so I believe it might. if it's not tomorrow morning, it might be Sunday. The coaches will discuss, and then they'll have the votes, and then it'll come out again. It's the one through five that are seated, and then the final three teams are random drawn in. That's going to be changing, though, in the next few years when they discuss that, but that's for a different day as the Yellow Jackets continue to cut down the nets here at Concordia. 
Yeah, and again, so if you're seeded one through five, it's just like your normal tournament. Uh, six, seven, and eight is just a random draw. You could get against the one seed, two seed, or three seed. Again, that's, uh, that is, uh, it's a little bit crazy, and it's a little bit about luck of draw, but if you look at one through three in this this double A, you're going to get a good team no matter what. Uh, and so oh, what a great what a great uh, you get the opportunity is I guess what I'm trying to say not so eloquently uh, you get the opportunity to be down there and participate and again we want to thank our sponsors I just got a shout out from the congrats yellow jackets from all of United Community Bank and we're certainly shouting back to them a, a huge thank you uh, without them and KLN and Perham Health we wouldn't have been on the air tonight and and I hope you gather from us how much Jason and I, lo- I love doing this. This is, it's a part of a way that we feel like we can be a part of the both runs for the Yellow Jackets teams here, and, and it's, it's just such a great, great way. And now streaming through uh, 549 Media, uh, we're, we're, we're really doing a night, we're really trying to bring uh, Yellow Jackets activities to life for you. And again, we thank our sponsors so much for that. As the Yellow Jackets cut down the nets, we can go over the scoring and stats of tonight's game. Willow Thiel leads the way with 35. Kaya Anderson adds 17 on the night. Six points on the board for Kennedy Pilgrim. Five each for Greta Razor and Riley Mickelson. Three for Cora Grismer. Two each for Hannah Leonard and Kate Diggins for the Yellow Jackets. For Pelican Rapids leading the way, Morgan Korf with 25. Ellie Welch with 10. Eight points on the board for Ari Hovland and Anna Roysom. Three for Zayla Arrow. Two for Grace Backstrom. One for Megan Guler. As the Vikings suffer the loss by a score of 75-57, they end their season with a record of 25-4. The Yellow Jackets improve to 26-3. As the managers now cut down the nets for the Yellow Jackets, there's a couple more left for coaches Michelle Borman, Robbie Cox and TJ Super. Right, and I think you'd probably, I don't know them all, but you you know TJ Super. He's going all the way down to the ones who coach uh, K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, and 8, and, and all that they've, they've done. And uh, you never know what you're going you're gonna to get on this texting. Someone said, well, they bite into the medals to find out if they're real gold or not. So it, you never know what, and, and I, I take it nobody ran out the door, so you, you, <laughs> they probably weren't real, real gold. So, uh, again, just just a really fun night, and, and I always wanted a piece of one of these nets, Jason, and I never got a chance to do this. Uh, so a little jealousy on my part as I'm watching this happen uh, I just always thought that would be the most fun as I spent years coming here and watching the Staples Motley boys basketball to Staples at that time, cutting down nets and they had the little piece and then watching the captains with it hung over their net, uh, their neck. And uh, just, I would do that at my basket at the farm, cut it down and, and when it was time to, to get rid of it, and wear it around my neck, dreaming about a day just like this. So, uh, Yellow Jacket ladies, Coach Super and your staff, enjoy every minute of this one. As TJ Super cuts down the net. With a nice round of applause from the fans still in attendance, the Yellow Jackets are going to state for the third time in the second year in a row. The Yellow Jackets with a 75-57 victory will play Wednesday nights at 6 or 8 p.m. at either Williams Arena or Maturi Pavilion for the opening round. And then, depending on the results, they'll go to Williams or the Gengelhoff Center for consolation. That's all pending the results. Check out permschools.org in the activity stream. We'll have the direct links to the NSPN coverage of those games as they have rights to the state tournament. And then after the first round, if the Yellow Jackets do advance, it'll go to KSTC 45, which is now covering the hockey tournaments right now. But the Yellow Jackets, and you see some fans raising the roof on the court. They're celebrating with the 75-57 victory tonight. Yeah, and, and again, Jason, what a thing to be a part of. I mean, 
I'm I'm just thrilled just to be a part of it up here and and to watch families and you just see the smiles and gathering. And again, I, I don't want to take anything away from the Pelican Rapids Vikings. They had a great year. Uh, they're they're battle te- they're going to be back. I mean, they're they they've got a lot of firepower coming back, and this has been just a a great year for the Yellow Jackets and. And again, they, they've set their schedule up very well to, to play some really quality teams that have enabled them to get to this point. But I think they're playing their best basketball when it counts the most, and that's right now. So uh, again, hats off to TJ Super, his staff, uh, Michelle Borman and Robbie Cox, and, and the junior high coaches and, and below. And again, uh, congratulations to all the parents and fans, fans and family and uh, the whole Yellow Jacket community as uh, you celebrate together with these young ladies, and we'll be cheering them on uh, at one of those venues that you said coming up next week in the state basketball tournament. And now another big question for the Yellow Jackets is what kind of meals is Kara Super peterson going to come up with for this squad as they've been well fed throughout the year, and now there's some big meals coming up as they head down to Minneapolis. Okay, you have to bring that up. I haven't eaten since 11 today. I'm starving. I saw the pictures of those meals. Man, they look delicious. I'm not sure how we get involved in that, Jason, but somehow uh, we should be able to snag our way into at least a leftover dish of those. We'll have to talk to Coach Super about that and then see. Uh, we tried to uh, to weasel our way in before, but no such luck. But again, uh, the Yellow Jackets, it, it, it's a great opportunity. Uh, again, back-to-back years, kind of in this day and age, is almost it's getting a, a little bit more unheard of that as much as everybody's playing basketball to get back-to-back years uh, to go. But, uh, again, everybody you can kind of see not wanting to leave the floor, nor should they. Uh, soak this in as long as you can and get as many pictures as you can. And now they're cutting down the second net here at Concordia but I think that's the future of Yellow Jacket basketball cutting down the nets as we're going. They're wasting little time on this one. Oh yeah <laughs> that's how I would have been I think I would have been the selfish basketball player if we would have ever been to this point I would have been cut multiple ones. Well the Yellow Jackets congratulations to them with the 75-57 victory tonight's over the Pelican Rapids Vikings as they're moving on to the Class 2A state tournament. For Lance Rock, I'm Jason Groth. We thank you for tuning in. We hope you had a good night, and congratulations to the Yellow Jackets, and best of luck at the Class 2A 